Hi, this is Lisa, and this is week two, teaching and learning online. We have several tasks to engage in this week. Uh, reading Ro Cohen Rossin's chapter one, teaching online an overview from page 15 to the end, viewing a video by Alec Kouros, checking out some teaching blogs, learning about RSS feed, and then, as always, making a post on your blog are the tasks for this week. So just to go through these very briefly, in Cohen Rossin, the main idea here is to talk about uh, a little bit about skill set and how it's not really necessary for online teachers to be full out techies. That what's more important is that we focus on our teaching and then look for ways to do it effectively in an online environment. So it's saying you don't have to be a computer expert. There are some skills you need. There are some skills you can you can get. Um, in training to become an online teacher, but that that's not really the focus. It also points out that online teaching can change what we do. It can, in particular, inform all of our teaching. When we teach online, we also pick up ideas and techniques that we can use for on-site teaching as well. It also can expose us to a larger community of teachers and colleagues in our field uh, to be teaching online, to create an online persona for ourselves, and to work in the online environment. The uh, video you'll be taking a look at is Alec Kuras at the University of Regina. He is a professor who teaches future teachers particularly in the topics of open education and social media. Uh, he discusses in this video uh, many things, but one of the key ideas is to create a professional academic presence on the web. And you're already doing that uh, through blogging and participating in this class. Uh, but his talk may give you ideas about how and why to extend that. Some of the uh, teaching blogs that we'll be looking at include the blogs of K through 12 teachers. Uh, these are people who have been blogging for a long time. I'll give you an idea of the different ways to focus on uh, what you blog and how you participate in that community. RSS feeds, you have already participated in um, RSS by putting in the feed of your own blog into Pedagogy First if you have uh, chosen to join the community in that way. But the basic idea of RSS is kind of like a subscription to a newspaper. Uh, when you subscribe to a newspaper, the newspaper shows up at your house every day. You don't have to ask for it each day. And each item that you get in the newspaper is news. It's something that you haven't seen before. RSS is kind of like subscribing to a website. Um, uh, many websites now, particularly blogs, but many other kinds of websites as well, have RSS feeds available for you to subscribe to. Uh, in the New York Times here, at the very bottom, they have an RSS link because they have so many different feeds that you actually have to choose. When you right-click on a feed, or in this case, I'm mousing over and you can see the uh, URL that they show you is a little different. You may have noticed that if you pasted your own feed into Pedagogy First. The uh, feed often has XML in it or RSS or sometimes the word feed. And if you right click and uh, copy the link location, you can plug that feed into what we call a news reader. A newsreader displays all the new items from all these subscriptions to all the websites that you have. I tend to use Google Reader because it's easy. It's very much available when I log into Google anyway to get my mail. And just adding a subscription here, I'm pasting in that subscription to the New York Times, simply adds it in. And as you can see, these are all the news items that I haven't read. And tomorrow, possibly even later today, this feed will update with more articles and I can read them here. I can keep many, many feeds in Google Reader 
and group them however I want to. I could group them into news, I could group them into blogs, I could group them into topics and be able to see uh, excerpts of everything that is at that website that is new. So RSS is a great way to follow anything on the web that gets updated and has an RSS feed. So you're being asked this week as uh, one of the tasks to set up your own newsreader account. Um, Google Reader is just an example. There are a great many newsreaders. Some of them are on the web and enable you to share very easily. Google Reader is one of those. But there are also um, desktop programs that you can download and just keep your feeds on your desktop. And many of the browsers have RSS feed features built in so you can keep all your feeds in a little drop down menu. I know Firefox does that. So for this week, go through all of the um, materials here and reflect upon them. And I'm looking forward to reading your posts.